When you really like the new Mini but think it's a little bit too common, the only other option to go for is something like the Clubman. I've decided to take the plunge about six months ago with the Cooper D. Ta -da! These are my new long-term wheels. I think a Bogo version will set you back about 15 and a half grand, but one suspects those black rims, the bonnet stripes, and the pepper pack, which includes manual aircon. It came to £17,610. Sounds steep, but you definitely get what you pay for. The looks are certainly less cutesy and more divisive than the regular car. It's kind of like a cross between a gangster's bread van and a hearse for Rumpa Lumpers. Well, you wouldn't want to be driving some mediocre Euro box, would you? Being 24 centimetres longer than the hatch, it offers more boot space and 8 centimetres more rear legroom. OK, so it's not exactly an estate, but what it will offer is a Mini with two seats in the back that you can actually use. There are more than a few areas of contention with this Clubman. First one being the van doors. They don't really have much function other than to mimic the original and look quite cool. But the biggest problem area is this club door. Many people before me will have told you that it's actually on the wrong side for the UK, but it's basically just an extra slab of door that opens and lets the rear passengers get in and out of a lot easier. But I don't really know what the problem is, because it's not as if the other side's impossible to get out of. Oh, oh, oh I can't do it. People are always moaning about the practicality, but if we all wanted something practical sat on our drives, we'd spend our Sunday afternoons washing the Toyota Aventis. But well, that's not why we buy stuff. We buy stuff because it's cool. And whether you like it or not, cool's important. Be it parked up next to Alistair's Jag, in the footy car park on a Monday night, or on its own in a winter wonderland. But what there can be absolutely no argument about is the engine. It's a 1.6 litre diesel that produces 110 brake horsepower. More importantly, I've been getting about 50 miles to the gallon out of it. That's saving me a fortune at the pump. Cars are important and everything, but you just don't want them to be financially crippling. And that's where the Clubman really, really works. One very cool feature for in town is the stop-start technology. It basically saves your fuel when you're driving and stopping all the time. You pull up to a set of traffic lights, clutch out, put it in neutral, and the engine cuts out. And then all I need to do is when the red light turns to green, put the clutch in, engine starts up, whack it into first, and you're away. It's quite unnerving at first because you think you've stalled, but after a while it becomes second nature and you'll be amazed how much time you spend sat in traffic. Faults? Uh, oh yeah, the water jet. Yeah, that sprays a little less on one of the things, but really, that's it. So, after 16,000 miles and six months of ownership, I can tell you that the Cooper D Clubman is built like a brick, has bags of character, is green without playing the green card, and is as recession-proof as driving's gonna get at the moment. As an ownership proposition, that car is gonna take some beating.